out on the outside. What's cracking, guys? Omar Yusuf here, your favorite local neighborhood creatine dealer. Always support local. Here today with another banger of a video. How to set yourself up for a comeback. How to hit all-time PRs, especially if you're detrained, maybe you've lost motivation, People have been observing the new series on the channel, The Resurrection. I really appreciate all the comments. We're now episode two, where I detailed my setback, where I do come from now a detrained state as it relates to strength. I wasn't able to deadlift, the bench press, uh, to do the overhead press with this elbow. I had an acute injury, which isn't relevant to this video, but what is relevant, because we're talking about you today, is how to set yourself up for a comeback. And this is very important because first, we gotta cut it off. We can't get cocky, kid. We need to define it. I noticed when we released the first episode, there was almost 600 comments and many people were saying, oh man, like either I lost motivation, COVID happened, a variety of different factors, but now I'm ready. And if you're ready, this isn't going to be a motivation talk. In fact, we're gonna get into the nitty gritty as it relates to programming, the practical information that you need to do right now to implement into your own training in order to get back where you were and then go past it. I'm going to assume a few things. One, that you're ready, right? So when we talk about training, when we talk about these concepts, sometimes if your motivation isn't 100%, you're mentally committed to what we're about to do, the comeback now, reaching where you were before and then getting far past it. Your motivation doesn't need to be 100%, but you need to start. And as you start, you will see the chips will fall into place. The second thing that we need to do, we'll need to define the nature of why you're detrained and the length of it, okay? For some people, if it's an acute injury, something that you couldn't then do that exercise or train that body part, that is different than you losing motivation, being lackadaisical with your training, taking several months off, maybe being busy with work, something happened, uh, some sort of event, maybe you're chronically stressed. Those are different things. The principles are the same. And that's what I wanted to say. Also, it's the time course of how long we've been out of the gym or out of practice in terms of what we've been doing. I'm gonna talk specifically as it relates to strength in this video because that's right now what I'm focusing on, but it also applies to hypertrophy. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the time course. There's some very good news. I'm gonna link some resources in the description. First off, if you're injured, you should check out the article, Barbell Medicine, shout out to Austin Brocky and the boys. Uh, it's called pain, what do like what to do if you are injured. That's a separate topic. But I'm also gonna link, there's a free program from the Mass Boys Monthly Application in Strength Sports, Mike Zordos, uh, Greg Knuckles, Eric Helms, Eric Trexler, uh, for you if you wanna do it. I'm not affiliated with them, but they put out fantastic information. And then lastly, an article by Sir Gregory Knuckles, all about detraining. But to get back to the topic, so there's, there's some resources there. To get back to the topic, we have to define the time course. If it's inside of a month, if you're thinking, oh man, it's been like a few weeks, like what I got, I got food poisoning. I got great news for you. There's research behind this that actually inside of a month, as long as you're not bedridden, so I'm gonna make the assumption here. If you are bedridden, uh, ridden, your uh, strength can deteriorate as well as your muscle mass pretty rapidly, about 1% per day as it relates to strength. But that's most likely not you. If the period of you being detrained where you've been out of the gym or not really training uh, at all is inside of a month, it'll come back very quickly. And there's not much you need to do. We'll still talk about the principles, but that's the good news. Uh, your first few sessions might feel rusty. That is different than you losing absolute strength. Now, as we extend past a month, let's assume it's two, three, four, five months, then it becomes more serious. The things you need to do become more involved. But the good news, the great general principle is that however long you've been away from the peak where you are at your best, it will take less time to come back. The kind of colloquial phrase that lifters use, muscle memory, it is a thing not in the way that people think it is, but however long you've been away from that peak or that time training, you know, seriously, uh, that will be less than the time it takes for you to come back. So that is very reassuring. We know this. Now, at the same time, there are a few things we need to consider. And let me use myself as an avatar here to understand what's going on. And what I mean when I say that is that for myself, I've you know squatted 500 pounds in that range for four to five years. The length of time that you're at a certain level will also influence how long it takes to come back. And that's one of the things, I wasn't trying to be hyperbolic when I said this is the most detrained I had been from these strength movements. I mean, you know, before we started again with my man Walter, I probably had done the deadlift two or three times in 11 months. 
Granted, I was doing lying leg curls, quad extensions, inverse leg curls, some hip thrusts, but I wasn't doing the movement. There's no specificity. So for me, that's D-Train as it relates to skill component. But I have been deadlifting around 600 pounds for also five years. That's a long period of time. And there's been many times in that point that I've been able to deadlift 600 pounds. So when we talk about being D-Trained, we have to think about the concept of how long have we been at this strength level. And if we benched four or five in high school and it's 20 years ago and it's some theoretical peak, that's a lot harder. If it's something that one time you hit everything was feeling right, your gym press was you know, watching you and you hit a 40 pound PR, that's probably not realistically your strength level. So with all those caveats, let's get into talking now all about what to do when you wanna come back. And one of the first very solid principles would be the following. It's easier to regain your maximum strength initially than your strength endurance. And what I mean when I say that, well, strength endurance is your ability to perform reps at a certain threshold. Let's say above 70% of your one rep max. So, you know, you do your sets of five, your sets of eight, at some sort of level what you're used to will probably feel a lot harder than training at maximum strength. And I think there's many reasons behind this. One, you don't have a work capacity because you're not used to it you should focus on the big principles. And the big thing I'm going to emphasize for everyone trying to come back as it relates specifically to strength would be incorporating singles. So regular exposure to heavier loads. And that's the key concept. Your maximum strength will likely deteriorate uh, more slowly than your strength endurance. So if we think about that concept, how would we set it up? Let's talk about the bench, let's talk about the squat, let's talk about the deadlift. For each of them, now there is some nuance within there, but these are general recommendations. You could train a single twice per week. You can have a medium day, a moderate day, and you can have a heavier day. And it be something like this that you can cycle as you're coming back. On your lighter day, the RPE would be roughly RP6. You'd work up to a single at RP6 where you don't need to get aroused, you don't need to get excited, you just go in and you can for sure do four more reps. So this is probably 85% of whatever your daily max is. So you uh, work up, let's say the bench press, 275, felt comfortable, great. Then you do your regular work that was as planned, as prescribed. Your second session, which would be later on in the week, at least 72 hours after, you'd work up to something a little bit more difficult. Week one, we could do like an RP7. Week two, we could do an RP9. So that means we have two reps more we could have done. And then lastly, week three, RPE9. So only one more rep, that would be more difficult. Then you cycle back, you bring it back down, you deload. So for the fourth week, you just do one single instead of doing two different singles on two separate days, you just do one single and then you repeat that process. And because it's rate of perceived exertion, your actual minimum threshold of what you're lifting should be going up. RP6 on week one will not be the same as RP6 on week five. So you take what you can do at that time. And I think one of the biggest mistakes that I see amongst people when they try and come back, they do too much too soon, right? So they think to themselves, I used to be here, I'm impatient, I don't like being where I am, I wanna get stronger, therefore I need to accelerate the process. And that's exactly what you shouldn't do. What you shouldn't try and do is jump ahead. Because as we said before, your strength endurance is likely down, and what will tend to happen is that your motivation, because you're doing these things, you're trying to you know, uh, train, do a lot of rep work, so on and so forth, and what ends up happening is that it's harder than it needs to be. And one of the secrets of strength training specifically is that you need to focus on momentum. Workouts should feel overall manageable that you can do it and fatigue this concept of fatigue is that there's uh, uh workout or workout fatigue uh, so session to session there's your weekly fatigue then your then there's your block fatigue right what accumulates over weeks and so on and so forth and if you do too much too soon where your body can't recover and you're struggling to do the prescribed reps not only is it demotivating but when it comes to training when it comes to that comeback when it comes to doing the necessary volume it's too much too soon it will lead you into a position where you're under recovered. So I think you gotta match the dose of what you wanna do with the goal. And likely that's actually less than what you think it would be. So I'd focus on regular exposure to singles, to things such as, you know, the RP6, like I said before, and we'll have the text on the screen, and then the RP7, RP8, RP9, cycle it back down, build back up. And you will notice, like for myself, I'll use myself as a concrete example. Because I've been deadlifting around 600 pounds for several years, when I came back, when I did my singles, I've been doing this, like we've been filming it. Uh, you know, by week five, I deadlifted 545, so that's like 
and I could have uh, did 585 on that day. So I probably could have uh, lifted 97% of my one rep max already within five weeks. And that goes to show, I'm just one example, that's one case study, but the idea that when done correctly, your strength will return pretty rapidly because strength is a skill. For hypertrophy, let's just add this conversation right here, that as you lost muscle mass, so let's say you, know, you haven't been training for six months, you've lost 10 pounds, you lost 15 pounds, you're feeling way more soft, it's a little bit different, but the general principle is the same in that if over the course of six months, you lost muscle mass, you lost all those things, it will take less than six months if you're training at the same level to regain it. And the same, once again, principle follows that you shouldn't train hard to start, meaning that you shouldn't push your body past a certain threshold and it has an inability to recover. You need to increase that work capacity over time. So make it manageable, expose yourself to the right dose of what you're trying to do when it comes to strength, doing more singles, and you will be surprised at how fast you come back. Last thing I wanna talk about too would be environment, right? Because we talk about th this key concept here of how can you set yourself up for success? And you really need to look at the variables outside of your lifting that will allow you to be a better lifter. For myself, that's recovery. That's me making sure I go to sleep. I'm a 3 a.m. boy, okay? Just chilling, playing music, that's what I do. Focus on things like recovery, focus on things like nutrition, making sure you're eating adequate protein. The environment training uh, partners, my man Walter right here, training with this dude, it's like you can't help but show up. And that's the concept right there. You're stacking the chips in your favor. So now there's that mental aspect of what can you do outside of the gym, you being focused, you being motivated, and then there's the practical, tangible uh, aspect of in terms of what you can do specifically if you want to come back and you want to hit some all-time PRs. So go ahead, check out those resources in the description. I think for many people, I get it. You get down on yourself because guess what? Like you used to be at a certain strength level and now it feels more difficult. You will notice, and I found this uh, myself, there's that inflection point, right? Where after the first few weeks, some of the workouts felt harder than they should have been as I expected on the journey as I'm percolating back up to a certain level. But you'll be surprised when you match what you need to do with what you do and you keep doing that as the strength returns, you'll be astounded, you'll be surprised, and ultimately I think you'll be satisfied. So it's been thrilling, fall, autumn, the season of change. We're now resurrecting these goals. It feels fantastic and that's why doing this series I wanted to give something a, a little bit more practical to everyone watching the video that we could talk about these things. If you have any comments, go ahead and ask me in the comment section down below because the whole point of the resurrection is getting to where we were and then surpassing it. And the first step to doing that is getting back to where we were. So I hope this video finds you well. I hope it helps uh, you out. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like the damn video. We're right here with the beautiful Don Valley River. Don't try and drink it. You might get E. coli, but if you like the video, you know what to do. Make sure to like the damn video. Thank you for following along with me as I got my daily steps, as I try to be a lean lad, as we turn into a lean, mean fighting machine. Like the video if you like the damn video. And I'll see all you guys, my rascals, in that next video. Peace.